Hi everybody, I hope this video finds you well. In today's video, we're just going to be taking a little bit of time to see how to use your calculator to calculate some basic statistical measures as discussed in the quantitative variables section of our course. Here we have a small data set uh, right here. You can also find the data set and the results of this video in the description of this video so that you, when you try this on your own calculator, can confirm that you're getting the same answers or the same uh, measures. You can also uh, find in the description of this video a small document laying out in text the steps that we're following in this video. So the main purpose of this video is to see how to use uh, a calculator to first input a data set, a quantitative data set like the one we have here, and then second, how to calculate the basic statistical measures like average, median, standard deviation, etc. So let's take a look. The calculator that I'm using here is a TI-84+, Plus, but the directions here should be pretty similar if you have anything that's like a TI-83, 84, 84 Plus, 84 Plus Silver Edition, or anything higher than an 84. There might be some slight modifications. You can always reach out to me if you have any questions about it, but it should be pretty similar to what we're doing here. So there's two main parts of using your calculator to do statistical calculations and get statistical measures. The first is inputting the data. To input the data into your calculator, what you're going to need to do is hit the stat key, which is located here, which will give you a menu of three choices, edit, calc, and test. For our class, we're going to be almost exclusively using the edit and calc features. Edit allows us to input data into our calculator and calc allows us to calculate statistical measures. We're going to start by using the edit menu here and you'll see that our cursor has a choice between edit sort A, sort D for sort ascending and sort descending, clear list and setup editor. What I want to call your attention to here is two of these that we're going to be using quite a bit. One is the edit, which is how we're actually going to input data. We'll talk about that in just a moment. And also setup editor. If at any time uh, your calculator seems to be malfunctioning, something goes wrong with your list, or you just want to restore everything in terms of list to their default setting, you can run the setup editor. How do you run the setup editor? Well, put your cursor on that setup editor uh, component, then simply hit enter. It'll then say setup editor. You hit enter again, and it'll say done. That basically takes anything that was in the list and sort of resets them to their default setting. This will happen if you accidentally delete a list or if the list seems to go missing, the setup editor will handle that for you. All right, so let's go back and actually get this data in here. So again, we'll hit the stat key, and then since our cursor is already on edit, we'll go ahead and hit enter, and this will bring us into our list menu. Most of the TI calculators can have you have six lists. So if you tab over with the right arrow, you'll see that you'll have six lists, L1, L2, L3, L4, and L5, L6. We're gonna go back and pretty much use L1. Sometimes in our class, uh, we might use L1 and L2 together, especially later on, but most of the time we can just use the first list because we're just doing one data set at a time. If your calculator already has data in it, uh, like mine does here, you'll probably want to clear that out before you put in the data set that we're working with. The easiest way to do this is to move your cursor up to where it is highlighted on, on L1 or whatever list you're working on, hit the clear key, which is right here, and then hit enter. By doing that, you will remove all of the data from that list. Key thing to remind here, yourself here is that we're using this clear key and not the delete key. The delete key will actually delete the list, and then you'll actually need to use the setup editor to restore the list. So when working with the list, you want to use the clear key, not the delete key. For now though, we'll go ahead and start adding our data. So I'm gonna start typing this all in. Uh, so I'll scoop this up just a little bit. So I'll take our first data point, which is 15. We'll type that in and we'll hit enter. You'll notice then that the first component in my list now says 15. So I'll do this a little bit more quickly now, typing the next one, so eight, and then hitting enter, then 10, and hitting enter, then 23, hitting enter, 14, and enter, uh, then nine, and enter, 15, and enter, six, zero, oh, there we go, six, zero, three, 25, 28, 6, 15, and 4. 
Okay, now, uh, something I'd like to call your attention to is if we move our cursor back up to the last data point we entered, which was the 4, you'll notice that it says L1 of 15. It says L1 of 15 right there. What that indicates is that that data point 4 was put into the 15th position. Why do I bring this up? Well, one good way to make sure that you didn't miss anything when typing in your data is you can see that in my data I had 15 data points because it's 5 by 3, so there's 15 data points. And by this telling me that we're at L1 of 15, I know that I've at least typed in 15 data points. Could I have made a typo along the way? Sure, that is possible, but at least I know I've typed in the right amount of data. Okay, so now we have our data in the list. So the calculator knows what data we want to work with. Now what we want to do is actually use the calculator to calculate the basic statistical measures like average, median, standard deviation, the things that we're interested in when working with quantitative data. To do this, what we're going to do is hit stat and then move our cursor over to calc. Now calc has a tremendous amount of different things that we can calculate, but we're pretty much going to be using only a couple. For right now in our course, we want to use the one var stats, which is the very first thing. Since our cursor is already on there, all we have to do is hit enter, and we're brought to this menu here. Now, if you have a slightly older calculator, you won't get this menu, and all you'll need to do is hit enter again. If you have a newer calculator, it does prompt you with this menu to ask you which list do you want to use. We put our data in L1, so it is correct that we want L1 there. And then it asks something about frequency lists. Now, later on in our class, we will make use of frequency lists, but for now, we don't want to use them. What that means is you want that to be blank. So you can go ahead and hit the delete there and make sure that it's blank next to your frequency list. If you have an older calculator and you don't have this menu, there's nothing you need to worry about here. Otherwise, we can go to calculate and hit enter. Again, if you have the older calculator and it just simply says one var stats at this point, just hit enter again. Either way, it should take a moment and then compute a bunch of things. Now, some of these things we want, some of these things we don't necessarily need to use. But let's go ahead and take a look at the things that we'll be using for our class. So I'm gonna just scoot this over so we can continue to see it. These are the main things that we often wanna calculate. We wanna know the sample size, the mean, the sample standard deviation, the population standard deviation, the minimum, Q1, the median, Q3, and the maximum. All these things can actually be found on our calculator. The first thing is the sample size. Remember that the notation for sample size is n, and you can see the n is located right there, n equals 15. We already knew this, but we can just fill that in, that n was 15 here. The mean, well, we can find that at the top right there. Uh, it's that 12.066667. Notice the notation is x bar there. As we talked about, that is the standard notation for a mean. We can round that if we want, and we can say that the mean here is approximately 12.1. Sample standard deviation, the notation for that is S, so we can find that right there. We can see that it's approximately 8.3. Most of the time in our class, sample standard deviation is the standard deviation we want, but sometimes we will want population standard deviation. As discussed in the quantitative variables video, population standard deviation is always a bit smaller, and there it is right there, 8.02. If we round that, it would just be approximately 8.0. Then we want the minimum, Q1, the median, Q3, and the maximum. Remember, those are what we call the five number summary. They're not initially displayed, but if you use your down arrow key and move down a little bit, you can see uh, all five of those five number summaries. The minimum was zero, Q1 was six, the median was 10, Q3 was 15, and the maximum was 28. Now, our, do we need the calculator for all these? No, minimum and maximum, we should probably be able to just look at our data and find the smallest number and the largest number, but the calculator does it for us as well. Things like the median, we talked about how to do those from scratch or manually, but now you also know how to use your calculator to do so. So this basically uh, quickly summarizes how to use a TI calculator to calculate the basic statistical measures necessary for our class. Keep in mind, once again, the main two things we are using is using stat and edit to type in your data, and stat and calc with one var stats as our main way of calculating things with, in regards to our data. In the future, in our sort of lecture videos, we'll have situations where we'll have data and I'll be using the calculator to calculate things like the mean, sample standard deviation, so on and so forth. Feel free to follow along and that'll be good practice to make sure that you're comfortable doing this 
on your calculator yourself. If you have any questions about calculator, always uh, calculator operations, always make sure to reach out to me. Our course is a statistics course. It is not a calculator class. So definitely at any time you have questions about how to make use of your calculator, always feel free to ask. Otherwise, uh, this will wrap up this calculator video. And in the next video, we'll return back to standard content regarding quantitative variables.